Have you ever wondered how antibiotics know to attack harmful bacteria and not our own cells? How do these tiny pills distinguish between friend and foe inside our bodies? Welcome to our deep dive into the world of selective toxicity, a cornerstone of antimicrobial therapy. By the end of this video, you'll not only understand this fascinating principle, but also appreciate the science that keeps us safe from infections. So, if you're curious about how modern medicine works as magic, stick around. Let's get started. Selective toxicity is the ability of a drug to target specific cells like bacteria, fungi, or parasites without harming the host cells. It's like having a sniper that can pick off enemies in a crowd without hurting any civilians. But how does it work? To understand selective toxicity, we need to delve into the concept of targeting, just as a sniper needs to identify the enemy among civilians and antimicrobial drugs identify and attack microorganisms while sparing human cells. This precision is achieved by exploiting the biological differences between microbial cells and human cells. One of the most critical aspects of selective toxicity is targeting structures unique to microbes. Take bacterial cell walls, for instance. These walls are made of a substance called peptidoglycan, which is absent in human cells. Antibiotics like penicillins and cephalosporins exploit this difference. They inhibit the synthesis of peptidoglycan, causing the bacteria to burst and die. This means these drugs can kill bacteria without affecting human cells. Another strategy involves targeting enzymes that are either unique to microbes or significantly different from those in humans. Sulfonamides, for example, inhibit a bacterial enzyme called dihydropteroid synthase. This enzyme is involved in folic acid synthesis, a process essential for bacterial growth but not present in humans as we get our folic acid from food. Let's take a closer look at penicillins. Discovered by Alexander Fleming in 1928, penicillin was the first antibiotic and marked the beginning of modern antimicrobial therapy. It specifically targets the bacterial cell wall synthesis, a process that doesn't exist in human cells. This discovery revolutionized medicine, turning deadly bacterial infections into treatable conditions. Selective binding is another clever tactic. Antibiotics like tetracyclines and macrolides bind to bacterial ribosomes, the protein factories of the cell. Bacterial ribosomes are structurally different from human ribosomes, allowing these drugs to inhibit bacterial protein synthesis without affecting human cells. Etracyclines work by binding to the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosome, blocking the attachment of amnocyl tRNA to the ribosomal acceptor site. This action prevents the addition of new amino acids to the growing peptide chain, effectively halting protein synthesis and leading to bacterial death. Human cells, which have different ribosomal structures, are not affected. Macrolides, such as erythromycin, also target bacterial ribosomes but bind to the 50S subunit. This binding interferes with the translocation step of protein synthesis, where the growing peptide chain is moved from the S site to the P site on the ribosome. This inhibition of protein synthesis cripples bacterial growth and replication. Fungal infections are tackled by exploiting differences in cell membrane composition. Fungal cell membranes contain a substance called ergosterol, which is absent in human cell membranes. Antifungal drugs like amphotericin B bind to ergosterol, disrupting the membrane and killing the fungus. Human cells, which contain cholesterol instead of ergosterol, remain unharmed. Amphotericin B binds to ergosterol in the fungal cell membrane, creating pores that increase membrane permeability. This disruption leads to leakage of essential intracellular components and eventually cell death. This selective targeting is crucial in treating systemic fungal infections, which can be life-threatening. Azoles, another class of antifungal drugs, inhibit the synthesis of ergosterol by targeting the enzyme lanosterol 14 alpha dimethylase this enzyme is involved in converting lenosterol to ergosterol, an essential component of the fungal cell membrane. By inhibiting this enzyme, azoles disrupt cell membrane synthesis, leading to fungal cell death. Antiparasitic drugs often target metabolic pathways unique to the parasite or more crucial to the parasite's survival than to the host. For instance, some antimalarial drugs inhibit the parasite's ability to digest hemoglobin, a process vital to its survival within red blood cells. Quinolines, such as chloroquine, interfere with the malarial parasite's ability to detoxify heme, a byproduct of hemoglobin digestion. In the parasite's digestive vacuole, chloroquine binds to heme, 
preventing its detoxification into hemozoin. The accumulation of toxic heme kills the parasite, while the human host remains unaffected. Antimalarial drugs like artemisinin also exploit unique metabolic pathways. Artemisinin interacts with heme in the parasite's digestive vacuole, producing reactive oxygen species that damage the parasite's proteins and membranes. This targeted attack effectively kills the parasite without harming the host. The more closely related the pathogen is to the host, the more challenging it is to achieve selective toxicity. Viruses, for example, use the host's cellular machinery for replication, making it difficult to target viral processes without affecting host cells. To tackle viral infections, antiviral drugs often target viral enzymes or proteins that are essential for replication but different from human counterparts. For example, HIV protease inhibitors block the viral enzyme protease, crucial for processing viral proteins. This inhibition prevents the maturation of infectious viral particles, reducing viral load and disease progression. Pathogens can also develop resistance mechanisms that reduce the efficacy of drugs, complicating treatment, and reducing the selective toxicity of antimicrobial agents. Bacteria can mutate and develop resistance to antibiotics, making it essential for scientists to continually develop new drugs. One notorious example is methicillin resistance to Philococcus aureus and MRSA. This bacterium has acquired resistance to many antibiotics, including methicillin. MRSA's resistance mechanisms include altering target sites, producing enzymes that degrade antibiotics, and efflux pumps that expel drugs from the cell. Combating such resistant strains requires novel approaches and continuous research. Combination therapy is one strategy to overcome resistance. By using multiple drugs with different mechanisms of action, it becomes harder for pathogens to develop resistance. This approach is commonly used in treating HIV, tuberculosis, and certain bacterial infections. Combining drugs ensures that even if a pathogen develops resistance to one drug, the other drugs can still target and kill it. Penicillins and cephalosporins inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis. By targeting the peptidoglycan layer, they effectively kill bacteria without harming human cells. Tetracyclines and macrolides inhibit bacterial protein synthesis by binding to bacterial ribosomes. This prevents bacteria from making essential proteins, leading to their death. Sulfonamides and trimethoprim inhibit bacterial folate synthesis, a pathway not present in humans. This selective inhibition stops bacterial growth without affecting human cells. Antifungal drugs like amphotericin B and azoles target or gosterol in fungal cell membranes. This disrupts the membrane, causing fungal cells to die while sparing human cells. Quinolines, such as chloroquine, inhibit the malarial parasite's ability to detoxify hemoglobin byproducts, crucial for its survival. This specific targeting kills the parasite without harming the host. As pathogens evolve and resistance becomes more common, the quest for new antimicrobial agents continues. Researchers are exploring novel targets and mechanisms to stay ahead in the fight against infectious diseases. From phage therapy to CRI scar based technologies, the future of antimicrobial therapy is promising and full of potential. Phage therapy, which uses bacteriophages, viruses that infect bacteria as antimicrobial agents, is gaining attention. Phages can be highly specific targeting and killing bacteria without affecting human cells or beneficial bacteria. This precision makes phage therapy a promising alternative in the battle against antibiotic-resistant bacteria. CRI spare-based technologies are also revolutionizing antimicrobial therapy. By using CRI spare systems, scientists can precisely target and cut bacterial DNA, disabling essential genes and killing the bacteria. This method holds potential not only for treating infections, but also for engineering bacteria to be more susceptible to existing antibiotics. Developing new antibiotics is a continuous effort. Researchers are exploring natural sources, such as soil microorganisms and marine life, for novel antimicrobial compounds. Advances in synthetic biology also allow the design of new molecules that can overcome resistance mechanisms and effectively target pathogens. Understanding selective toxicity helps us appreciate the delicate balance modern medicine achieves in treating infections. It's a testament to the ingenuity of scientists and researchers who work tirelessly to keep us healthy. 
If you found this deep dive into selective toxicity fascinating, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover next. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.